I've gotten quite a few requests for a Portal tutorial in Scratch. Portal's probably one of the best games I've played in the last few years, and so here it is. Here's how you do it. Test chamber completed. What I want to do is set up a few sprites. So I've got a robot, a blue and an orange portal, a blue bullet that creates the blue portal, an orange bullet that creates the orange portal, um, and I made a block. You don't need to do that, you could just paint the background. And then finally I have uh, this one called Sprite One, and it's an invisible sprite that just keeps track of what direction um, the robot's gun should be pointing. So, uh, once you've set all those up, then you can start. It doesn't matter how you draw them, I've done my very best here to draw something that looks like Portal. Um, okay, so let's start with um, with the robot and his aim. Um, to do that, um, we're going to start by uh, programming, programming a few things about our robot uh, and setting up a few variables. So we're going to need to make a variable that keeps track of the robot's um, X and Y position on the screen, and I've called these two variables bot X and bot Y. You can see I've already created them, so you'll need to go ahead and make variable. I'm making them global variables so that they're viewable by all the different sprites in the game so that they can all access the information. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start um, with a flag push on our robot here. So we're going to say when we push the flag, um, we need to always remember where our robot is. So I'm going to get a forever loop, and this is pretty easy. I'm just going to go into my variables, and I'm going to set the robot's X position and Y position. So every time through the loop, it checks to see where is the robot, and it records this information. So I'm going to go into sensing and, um, sorry, motion and X position and Y position. So we're always remembering where the X and Y position are of the robot. The next thing we're going to do is um, I just, for simplicity's sake here, I'm going to put up a, a few keys. When I push the D key, I'm going to get uh, my robot to change on the x-axis by 10 and we'll go with the a key for um, moving left so I'll go to motion and change x by minus 10 so this is just a simple back and forth um, I have another video that shows you how to make realistic uh, video game movement not unlike Super Mario Brothers, so you should check that out if you combine these two de demos together. You can come up with a very cool game, I think. Anyway, so uh, let's start with that. So my robot moves left, he moves right, and we have two variables that just remember the position of the robot. Um, so now what we're going to do is program um, the bullet that shoots out of the robot, and to do that we're going to use a, a helper sprite here, which I've just cleverly named Sprite One, and all it is is an arrow that shows um, what direction the mouse is pointing in. So uh, let's do that. So again, I'm going to need to initialize this sprite. So we're going to say when the flag is pushed, we want to forever. And we're going to go into motion. We're going to have it point towards. Uh, the mouse pointer. So we always want the, our sprite pointing towards my mouse. That way we'll know what direction the gun should shoot when we push fire. Um, we're also going to need to remember uh, the direction and we're going to save it also in a variable. So I'm going to um, create a variable called direction fire. And if we go into variables we can say set direction fire to direction. That way we can always remember when we shoot what direction the mouse was pointing when the bullet left the robot. The next thing we want to do is we want this sprite. Um, let me just actually just turn it on so you can see it. So it's right down here. 
Uh, we want it to always be where the robot is. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm always going to um, have it go to the X and Y position that the robot is in. And as you remember, we just set up a bot X and bot Y variable that's being updated continuously whenever the flag is pushed. Last thing we're going to do is we don't actually want this to show up, so we're going to hide it. But I'm going to keep this turned off for right now, and I'll just leave the piece down there. We'll add it in later because it might be helpful to diagnose what's going on. So you can see this arrow is here just so that we know which direction to fire the bullet in uh, whenever we're playing the game. Okay, so that sprite is more or less done now. I'm going to I'm going to, um, actually, I won't put that piece in yet. You never know, we might run into some problems. Um, let's program the blue bullet to start off with now. So, this is semi-complicated, not that complicated, but again, we want to set up a few um, initial states for the bullet. So, when the flag is pushed and the game begins, um, we want to hide the bullet, first of all. We don't want it to show up until the robot fires his gun. Um, we also want the bullet to always originate from wherever the robot is. So we're going to say go to XY and we're going to get the variables from the robot. So we're going to say bot X and bot Y. And then lastly, we're going to throw a forever loop in. And we're going to say um, that we want to keep track of the current position of our bullets X and Y so that if it ever hits a white surface, uh, we can make the portal appear where it was. So, again, I created two variables called uh, bullet X, blue bullet X and blue bullet Y. And you can go ahead and create them, make them global again, so visible to all sprites. And we're just going to say set blue bullet X to and set blue bullet Y to and um, we're just going to go under motion and grab the X position of the bullet and the Y position of the bullet. So that's all it ever does. It just keeps track of... For me, I shoot the blue bullet whenever I click my mouse. So let's start by programming the bullet to fly out from the robot. Sorry about that. So I'm going to go under control and I'm going to see when I receive the fire uh, announcement and I'll show you why we're doing it this way in a minute. We're going to um, go into motion and we're going to say go to bot x, bot y. We want it to start firing from wherever the robot currently is, so that's the first thing we do. Have it go to that position. Then we need it to point in a direction, so we're going to go again into motion and say point in direction, and as you recall, we set up a variable called direction of fire. So this is the arrow is pointing in the direction of fire. You can see the variables right up here displayed. And so we want our bullet to point in that direction, so that's the direction it flies. Then we need it to appear before it starts flying across the screen. So we'll say show. We'll set up a forever loop. And this is where it gets a little complicated. So we want to check to see if our bullet has hit a white surface. We also want to check to see if it's hit the edge of the screen, because it's not useful anymore if it's hit the edge of the screen. And if it hasn't done one of those two things, we're going to have it um, move a bit. So let's just start by throwing in um, um, a move 10 steps. And you know what? Let's make it five. You're just going to go here under stage, and you're going to set up um, when the stage is clicked. So that's under control here. So when stage is clicked, and then broadcast, and I just wrote the word fire. And so whenever we click on the stage, boom, it shoots out a bullet. So, so you can see when I push fire, it's almost working. It seems that the uh, the bullet is appearing from somewhere down here instead of our robot. So let's push stop and start it up again and see. Okay, there's obviously a problem. Ah, I see. I've got bot X and blue Y. 
That's the problem. So we need to go into variables and we want bot x bot y. Now it should work. There we go. Now our blue portal is coming out of our robot. Right. So what we want it to do is check to see if it's touching um, these uh, white blocks, first of all. And uh, we also want to check to see if it's touching the edge of the screen. Um, we're just going to stop the script if it's touching the edge of the screen. So I'm going to go in here and say if touching uh, the edge. We're just going to go ahead and stop it. So I'm going to scroll down and say stop script. Um, next, we're going to see if it's touching the white wall. So go back to sensing. Oh, sorry. Let's throw an if block in there first. We're going to say if. And I'll just drop it here. So if touching, I'm going to use touching color. I'm just going to use the little dropper to grab the white color of the block. So if it's touching white, then we're actually going to have it broadcast that it's hit the wall. And the reason we're going to do that is because then the portal sprite needs to do something. So I'm going to say new. I'm going to say hit the wall. Oops, I don't want my caps lock on. Hit, oops, hit the wall blue. And then we're just going to stop the script again so that the bullet stops flying. And we're going to take over um, in the, uh, the blue code. So let's just make sure that our script stops when it hits the wall. Yep. Let's see if it stops when it hits the... Oops, I need to push the flag. Uh, let's see if it stops when it hits the... Um, yes, it's the white here. And let's check here. Yes. Okay, so it's working. All right, so now we've broadcast that it's hit the wall, and the blue bullet has hit the wall. We need to um, pick that up in the portal and do something with that information. Okay, before we do that, though, we need to tell our portal that before, when the game starts, there are no portals, so we're going to go into um, looks, and we're going to hide the portal. And then we just need to remember... Um, Um, sorry. what the X and Y position of the portal are so that we'll know where to send our robot if it goes through. So we're just going to say um, variables set, oops, wrong order. Let's hide that. And we'll say set the X to the X position and set the Y Maybe I should have called this variable blue portal y, blue portal x, but anyway, I've done it now. Okay, set blue x to, and then we're going to grab the x and y position, current x, y position of our blue portal. x and y. And, okay, then we're going to deal with the, okay, so what do we do when we hear the broadcast? Um, that it's hit a wall. So I'm going to say when I receive hit blue, hit wall blue. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set the portal's current position to the X and Y position of the blue bullet that we shot. So we're going to say uh, go into motion and we'll say go to X, Y and we're going to use our variables um, blue bullet X blue bullet Y, and then we're going to make our portal show up because it's hidden until it hits a wall, so now it's going to show. And we're also going to throw this go to front thing in. Um, so sprites are layered in this game and we want it to show up above the white wall sprite. So I'm going to say go to front. And then the last thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to remember its current x and y position. So I'm going to go under variables and I'm going to set blue x and set blue y. Again, these are variables that I've created, uh, so you'll want to create them too. You can just check out this whole list and make the whole list of variables. I'm going to go to motion and we're going to change remember the blue x and blue y positions and that's it so let's see what happens I shoot and boom we got a blue portal I shoot down here and boom we got another blue portal so we are a good ways along in making our blue portal um, so what else do we need to do let's go back to our robot we need something to happen if our robot were to touch a blue portal we want it to go through come out the orange portal so here's what we're going to do um, we're going to go under controls and we're going to check to see if the um, robot is touching a blue portal and if it is we want to change its x and y position to the um, x and y position of the orange portal but hang on we haven't programmed that yet so we better do our orange portal and our orange bullet so we have nothing for our orange bullet nothing for our orange portal no problem check it out I just go under the blue portal and I just drag this whole block under the orange bullet and this whole block under the orange bullet and then I go in and I just change it so that it's uh, orange X orange Y and then that looks good. The next one, when I see fire, uh, go to, yes, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Now, one other thing we're going to change for the orange bullet is instead of pushing or clicking, shoot it. Uh, we're going to make it so that we have to push the space bar to fire the orange portal. So when space is pressed, we're going to shoot the orange portal. Just like that, and when the blue portal is shot, just like that, and now you'll notice that a blue portal appeared on me when the orange one hit the wall, so that's just a few other things we need to clear up, and so we'll do that here in the orange bullet code. Ah, sorry, we want to change this to, instead of hit wall blue, we're going to broadcast hit wall orange. There we go. So now when I shoot the orange bullet it doesn't create an orange portal on me. Okay, next the orange portal. We can do the same thing that we just did with the blue portal to copy the code over. So we'll just drag it right here from the blue onto the orange. Then we go into the orange and we just make the necessary just so this becomes uh, orange X and orange Y when I receive hit wall orange go to and now we'll grab our variables we'll say orange bullet X orange bullet Y show go to front set and now instead of blue X we'll say orange X oops I made a mistake that's orange X and orange Y and we should be in business. Let's try to shoot my orange bullet down here at this wall and boom and it happened. Shoot the blue one up here and boom. Okay back to our robot. So we've said if touching a blue portal we need something to happen. What is that something? So we're gonna set the location uh, of our robot to um, the orange portal variables. So I'll say orange X and orange Y. And we're going to duplicate this whole chunk here because we're just going to say the same thing if it's touching the orange portal. We want to go instead of to orange X, orange Y, we're going to go to blue x blue y and 
Um, I'm going to throw in a wait for two seconds, just because we don't want uh, a robot to keep slipping back and forth through the two portals. So whenever he goes through a portal, it'll take us a few seconds before it'll let him go back through. Otherwise, he might just keep zipping back and forth and back and forth and back and forth across the screen really quickly. And now, I just move my robot down here to get a sense here of how this works. Obviously, I made a mistake, and I see it right here. So that should say... Sorry, I see the problem right here. That should say blue eye. Let's try it again. There we go. Here goes my robot across the screen, and he's going to hop through the orange portal and pop out the blue one, go through the blue one, and pop out the orange one, just like that. Um, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to take our arrow here and we're going to make it so that it hides. We don't need it to be visible anymore. And now, just like that, blue portal, orange portal. Well, it's a little slow, but here it is running up the screen. When I go through the blue, it comes out the orange. When I go through the orange, it comes out the blue. Now, if you were to combine this with the other scratch tutorial I did, that, use, that shows you how to add acceleration to a sprite. This could be a pretty awesome portal game. So check out that video too. Test chamber completed.